Hey guys, this is Shyam from Pumpkin Studios and today I am going to show you in this video how to create menu animations and cutscene animations in Buildbox. So let's get straight into it. I am going to open up one of my old projects, uh, one of the games that we are making and I am just gonna hit play so you can see what kind of game it is. It's just a right side side scrolling game and in which it's all about pet killing humans. So what I want to do is make sure that I can put a cutscene before in which pets show its own dominance into it. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to my mind map and I'm going to create some space and I apologize for the mess in the mind map and I'm just going to make some space behind over here in this area so I can create a cutscene UIs and a cutscene world. So I'm just going to move this around and over here I'm going to create all of the cutscenes. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy the world. So here you go and I'm going to place it over here and I'm going to disconnect the UI and I'm going to connect it straight to over here. I'm going to create a separate world because what I want is something unique. When the game starts, the game starts as normal. Then at suddenly, let's say in let's say in one second, you get a cutscene where a dialog box pops up and the pet starts talking to the humans. And after the dialog box, I want the world to load. So let's uh, let's do that. And I'm just going to rename the world over here to cutscene world. I'm going to create a new UI. And let me go and check in if it's everything's all right. Now I'm going to name it to pauser. I'm going to use this UI to pause the game and create a fade in effect when the game pauses. Let's rename this to cutscene pauser. And I'm going to go inside and I'm going to import my pause screen. And over here I'll just import a white screen. I'm going to resize it. Go back and duplicate it for future use. And while I'm here, I'll just rename it to my cutscene UI so I can keep keep track of it. And I'm going to select this and lower its opacity to zero. What I want is a fade in effect. I'm going to drag an observer and from game over, I'm going to change this to timeout and I'm going to give it a timeout of zero. I want the game to pause as soon as the cutscene starts. And if I hold play, if I press play, and you can see there is absolutely no pausing. I can go back and I can actually connect it straight to the cutscene UI so the UI loads. All right, now I'm going to turn it up and I'm going to make sure that pause current world is checked and make sure the timer is at zero and make sure that there are no animations right now i'm going to press play and over here the white screen shows up that's the screen from this ui so i'm going to correct click on this and i'm going to change it to uh, transparent so you can see and there you go the game is paused now i can use this to create an animation where some sort of a fade in happens then the animation happens so i'm going to go to the close because i want this to happen when this thing is getting unloaded i'm going to give it a couple of frames i'm going to give it around 20 frames and i'm going to change its opacity to 0.25 actually i'm going to keep it at zero over here at the start and when it's at the end i'm going to give it 0.25 as you saw i turned this recorder button on now i'm going to play it and playbacks perfectly fine so over here what I'm going to do is again I'm going to keep it at idle and I'm going to give it that so when it plays it goes into pause screen and there we go. That's the pause effect that I wanted to see. Alright now we got the pause effect let's add the dialog box. I'm going to load my dialog box as an image straight into build box. I'm going to drag and drop. What I want to do over here is first the first thing i'm going to do is make the size smaller now what i want is this to pop up out of from the bottom 
So I'm going to go to the open area where I'm going to press the record button so I can start recording its keyframes. And over here, I'm going to give it somewhere around 20 frames. And now at the last, I want this position to be its exact position. And over here at the front, I want it to be at bottom. So I'm going to select this, drag it straight to the bottom. And when I leave it, you can see there's a keyframe made. So over here, I'm going to delete it because I left it earlier and I'm going to do it once more time, one more time. And there you go. Now the keyframe is made. I'm going to drag it and there you go. It's popping up straight. Now I'm going to keep on editing it to make it look good. And I'm going to fast forward this edit process so you don't have to sit through it. All right, so what I want to do is try the graph editor to fix it. Now graph editor is a really powerful tool that allows me to tween it to change its motion and everything. So that's going to get me to just edit the graph so I can turn the curves just the way I want the animation to happen. So I'm going to turn on the graph editor and I'm going to go straight down to my position Y. And as I can see, there's a huge bump and that's not looking good. So I'm just going to turn it down, modify it so it looks way a bit more normal. And I'm going to go back and now the bump's looking really good. All right, now what I want to do is stay on idle. It's going to stay normally and at close I want it to drop down. So I'm going to give it 20 frames more. I'm going to just click over here and press the record button and I'm going to click it and I'm just going to drag it just a bit so all of the objects all of my positions get registered as a keyframe that's well and good I'm going to go to the last frame and drop it down and now I can just drag and view and it looks perfect I can but what I want to do is try something new I want to add an ease out effect so what I'm going to do is move the curve handle a bit up and as you can see, it's taking a bit more time, but I want it to stay more because I also want the text that will be written on it later on to fade away. So I'm going to pull it up a bit more so it stays in the air a bit more frames. And there we go. So that's how you can easily create an ease in and ease out effect. All right, so that's the effect. I'm going to press play and I'm just going to test it a little bit. And there you go, it pops up perfectly. But it does not go down because I have not yet given it a, a method to go to the next one, to the next UI. So I'm going to duplicate this UI just for safekeeping. And I'm going to go into this one. And over here, what I want is a way for it to go to the next one. So I'm going to go down straight to my buttons. I'm then going to create a navigation button. I'm going to make it the full screen button so anywhere the player taps he can go down to the next dialog I'm going to change it over here from uh, change the name of it uh, to next cutscene I'm going to back out and I'm going to connect it with the next one and I'm going to call this cutscene UI2 you can give it a, name, a more meaningful name if you want but that's going to work just fine for me right now. I'm going to press play and I'm going to check. The cutscene happens, the dialog pops up and when I tap, it goes down and the next cutscene happens. That's good. That's great. So I'm going to go back now. All right. What I want now to is the character to pop up from the right side. So it looks like the character is talking. So what I'm going to do now is increase the frames up to 30 so after the whole dialog box pops up i have a bit of 10 frames so that the character can also come in front and i'm going to put all of this on my open so i'm going to import it as an image i'm going to put it on the left side of the screen right about there now i'm going to press record and i'm going to move it a bit over there and straight up to the end where I want the character to land. 
I want it to come over the box a little and there you go. Completely properly moves in forward and in the idol is going to stay there. And now I'm going to go to the next cutscene button and I'm just going to move it at the top so the player does not block it by accident. And now comes the time for the test. Now I'm just going to write the name of the character and just a dialogue that it's going to say. And now I'm going to press play and I can see the text still remains at the top while the whole chat box, the dialog box goes down. So I'm going to select all my text and I'm going to change its opacity to zero. And here at idle, I'm going to make the text appear. So right after the, all the animation happens, when it loads the idle track, I'm going to start record and I'm going to write its opacity to zero so that I can make a keyframe of that. And right about at over here at frame five, I'm going to make its opacity to one. So now when I play it, it appears. And there you go. And I'm also going to make sure in the graph editor, I can go to opacity. I can check for the others. Now I want the name to appear first. So I'm going to select the other one and I'm just going to move its keyframe. I can do that straight here in the graph editor and I'm going to move it forward. Now I'm going to do it for the same, the other one also. Now I'm going to check both of them are the same and I'm going to press play and the name comes first, then the text appears and that's exactly what I was looking for. Now over here at the close one, the character automatically is on the left side and it goes down perfectly and the text is uh, disappearing perfectly. But I want the text to disappear when it goes down to close. So I'm going to go down to close, press record and of all of the text I'm going to change the opacity to 1 and now due to the using our ease in and ease out we got a few couple of frames to make the text dip disappear before making it go down so that's a really neat trick that's going to come in handy and i'm going to press play it loads the text appears and i'm going to press the button the text is kind of small i want to make it a bit more big so i'm going to select my text and the best part is i never you use the key animations on the positions so i can just position and scale it with no problem at all and the only the opacity I need to be a bit careful about now. So I press the play and there you go. The text appears perfectly. And when I tap it, the next dialog box appears. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the next, the second dialog box with just a few differences. The first thing which I'm going to do is go to the graph editor, go to its X scale and delete the keyframe over here because what I want to do is I want to flip this. I'm going to go to Y scale and delete it just for safe measure. And what I want, I'm going to do over here is just add a negative sign in front of scale. Over here, there you go. And it just flips to the other side. So it feels like the other side character is going to say something. Now, if I drag this over here and if I make put it over here, I would have to do all of the text animations and all of those animations again. So over here. As you can see, everything will happen again. So what I can do is I can just delete that one and create a new one uh, and I can just copy the new one. So now instead of that, what I, all of the animations gets loaded automatically over here and I can connect this to the world. All I have to do is just replace a couple of things. The first thing I want this not to be the set next cutscene. I'm going to change it to game start or cutscene and that's way better and over here here's the text and again since I did not edit the text in any way I can just rename the text and it's going to work perfectly so I'm going to make those edit editing really quick now all right now I have made this editing now what I'm going to do is just change 
the position and the image of it. Let me start with the image. I'm going to drag the image over here. All right, the image is loading perfectly. Now, as for the motion, I'm going to change the motion. I'm going to just make a safety save before I do anything else. So what I'm going to do is do something that's a bit clever. Now, Buildbox allows you to overwrite your old keyframe. So I'm going to press record, move the character to the other side, go to its position and you can see the position changed. And you, I can go to the last one now uh, by moving the cursor over here. And I'm going to move it into place where the character will speak the dialogue. And when I leave it and I move it back and there you can see it perfectly does it for me. I'm going to press play. It's a dialogue box and Blackie is going to say it's dialogue and then the human comes and the human says it's dialogue. And after that, the game loads perfectly. So the next level is gonna load after that. And that pretty much is how you can easily make cutscenes, edit your previous cutscenes to duplicate the new ones, uh, easily create smooth transitions by using its open end, idle, and close animations. And you can easily use its graph to edit your cutscenes. Using the graph, you can also create really good ease in and ease out effect, really good tweening effects. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.